If you're looking for the best sports memorabilia and card break room on the internet, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tonight's action will move fast, so we want to prep you for what you're about to see on your screen. First, the all-important dice roll number. At the top of the show, the host will randomize a series of numbers. The number selected from the randomizer will become the dice roll number for the entire show. Meaning every mystery box that is broken, the names of every collector will be placed on a list and randomized using the dice roll number for the show. Next, you see this black ticker down here? This shows you which numbers are still available in each and every Ultimate Autographs mystery box series. When a break fills or sells out, the host will ask for a number. This is where you make your selection from. Simply type a number in the chat and the host will pick the first number they see. Throughout the show, you may see two different types of breaks, divisional and top spot. Divisional breaks are most common. In this format, all eight individuals who enter a football-themed break will be positioned next to one of eight football divisions after their names are randomized using the show's dice roll number. When the mystery box is opened, the football division of the team represented in that mystery box becomes the winning division. The lucky collector whose name is randomly placed next to that football division takes home the signed piece of authenticated memorabilia. Our top spot format is typically reserved for giveaways, college theme series, and non-football breaks. In a top spot break, all names are added to a list. They are randomized using the show's dice roll number. At the end of the randomization, the name at the top becomes the winner of the signed item or prize. Breaking sports memorabilia has never been easier or more fun than it is in Ultimate Autograph's live break room. Remember, every mystery box series you see on the show can also be purchased as a personal mystery box that is either shipped directly to your home for you to open, or you can request to have it opened on a future Ultimate Autographs Live Breaks broadcast. Also, while you're waiting for your break to fill, we encourage you to look around ultimateautographs.com to see if you find a piece of memorabilia you love and want to add to your collection. And don't forget, every Live Break spot you purchase automatically earns you 6% back in UA cash that you can later exchange for a mystery box or a signed item of your choosing. All right, the time has come. Let's break some certified, authentic sports memorabilia in Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tell them, boys. Good evening. Welcome to the UA Live Break Studio. Monday night action here. We got myself and Matt Bohannon. Matt, what's going on? How are you doing on this lovely Monday in July? Doing well. Nice. Yeah. Good. Just the, Good. Uh, we had a busy show on Saturday night. And That's correct. You were uh, on late. We are. Yeah, we uh, sold through the whole basketball series in one night, so that was fun. Pretty incredible stuff. Pretty incredible stuff. Quick rundown we have available. This evening we have our Luxury Lids Black Box Replica Helmet Series. We have our Diamond Series available. We have our 4th of July Mixer and 4th of July Authentics available. Once the uh, two breaks that are filled up are... Uh, gets filled up those will no longer be uh single box breaks we're going to move those to a double box breaks uh with both of them in their own break um and then we'll also be moving those to retail so if you want to buy a personal you can we have our uh, qb1 uh mini helmet series we debuted those yesterday uh we have the flight crate available we have a brand new jersey series called hard hitting uh majority of those are uh, hall of famers soon to be hall of fame uh, defensive players, including uh, Jerry Rice is in the graphic, but I mean, Jerry Rice is a headliner, uh, no matter what the name of the series is. Uh, so we're debuting that tonight. We have one pre-filled, uh, so we'll be getting to that uh, momentarily. Not at my house. Uh, Aiden, please contact customer service. If you need the email, let me know. So we're going to be starting off our uh, night with our Tom Brady 16 by 20 photo giveaway uh, for everybody who it purchased uh, a break spot uh, last week. Uh, so we have the whole name list of names right here, and we will be uh, doing that right now. So here we go.
Uh, Ronald Whitaker, if you're in the chat, uh, can you let us know if you'd like us to open your three minis live or you'd like us to wait? Let us know, please. Thanks. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, first thing we gotta do is the dice roll. That would then determine what we're doing. So, two dice, uh, six or greater. Ten. Ten. Ten times? Ten times. And we've got uh, everybody in here. Got him, he's out. All right. Uh, ten times on the randomizer. We are randomizing, I believe, like 1,200 names. 1,200 words. So we're going to be... Scrolling for a while. Let me do it. Where should it be? 1,205. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Hit end button. That's clutch. Thank you, Dusty. Nine. And ten. The top name on the list will be sent this Tom Brady 16 by 20. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Going to Dwayne Wright. Dwayne, nice hit. Congratulations. Going home with a TB12. 16 by 20. So is that end button right next to the delete? It is. Uh, you, I love it. You learn something new every day, Dusty. Much appreciated. Dwayne, congrats on your Tom Brady 16 by 20. That'll get shipped out to you tomorrow. Tommy B. Tommy Pick. Tommy Pickles. Pickles. Timothy Pickles. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have a Dutch auction item for this evening. It is already up on the page. Pull up. Uh, and it is a T. Higgins Lunar Eclipse Mini. The uh, big issue, as you can see based on the tape, is a little bit of a, uh, like a scuff mark on it. Um, but other than that, it is fantastic. Awesome little hit right there. Going to be starting at $150. If you're interested, go check out our live break page. It should be at the bottom of the, uh, the page. And uh, go snag it before someone else does. Oh, leave that right there. Right, our first break of the evening is going to be QB1 number one. A double box break. Let's get two box servers in the chat, please. A lot less names here. This is easier. Good. <laughs> Eight, nine, and ten. Fair point, Bob. <laughs> uh, that's probably it's a really good point. Lots of Chris's. <laughs> that is an outstanding point. Chris. Um. Yeah, I'm just getting the numbers correct. I didn't 
adjust it before then. Uh, let's get two box numbers, please, for QB1 number one. Anybody. Nestor, Kyle, Brady, Andrew, Travis, Joe. James needs some dolphin stuff. Uh, probably can get it in the break room, but potentially uh, some people who are watching might have some dolphin stuff they're trying to get. Uh, not rid of, but trying to move. Uh, James, let them know what players you're looking for. You're looking for, like, Dan Marino? You're looking for, like, Devontae Parker? You know? Xavier Howard. Yeah, Larry, Larry Little. Xavier Howard. Brandon Marshall Dolphins? Sheesh. Uh, Jay Cutler Dolphins. Good God. I completely forgot about that. Uh, anybody? Box number. When do we get UA cash from Flag Day? That's... Um, Dan, I'm gonna have you email customer service. I'm not. Uh, I'm not hundred sure. Uh, no, I, I would email operations for UA cash. Operations at ultimateautographs.com. You don't hear those students. How about we just email both people? Then everyone gets involved. Sixteen and twenty-two. Uh, Danny Cash, I don't know if you are aware, but you won um, the Flag Day Authentics for the giveaway. The Kyler Murray and the Dak Prescott. Just email everybody. Sorry, it's all caps. I actually hit caps lock on. And then I kept typing and I was like, I'm not going to delete it. <laughs> Ultimate autograph is going to be faster than that. Come on now. <laughs> uh, 16 22. Oh, Gusecki, there you go. Sixteen of fifty. All right, JSA, COA. Got ourselves a Bears hit. We have Super Bowl champ Jim McMahon. Mini right there going to Nestor. Nestor, I said. Nestor. Jimmy Mack. Fifty. He's always wearing the headband. Correct. He was a headband guy. Best one was a Roselle one. He rocked a Roselle oh, yeah, badge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, JSA, C O A. Got ourselves a Tennessee Titans hit. We've got former 2,000-yard rusher, CJ 2K, Chris Johnson. Going to Joe. Joe, nice hit. Uh, Danny, please email them again. If you haven't heard from them again. If they haven't heard from them once, email them again. I would definitely email operations as well for the UA cash stuff. Do 
We already randomized the Brady photo. We got hard hitting number one. Nobody here in the chat tonight won it. Hard hitting number one, a single box break. Let's get a box number in the chat, please. Uh, Christopher Wells, unfortunately, yes, you did lose. Dusty, we have not done the Mega Jersey or the Bad Rap. I don't think the Mega, mega Jersey is filled up yet, but the Bad Rap is filled. 560. Well, that's one way to start it off. Headliner hit to begin. We got Jerry Rice going to Nestor. Nice. Nestor, there you go. That's just a 49ers fan, too. That is, uh, I'm sure, a, uh, a PC hit. What's going on? Uh, we haven't done the 4th of July yet. Uh, no, we've not thought about randomizing the left side. That works. I left it this over here, so it's less exciting. Uh, but definitely something we can consider. Next, we got batter up number one. Let's get a box number in the chat. We'll break the box open and then randomize our names. Dusty's in this break. Just asking about this. I'm gonna box somebody. Eight. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. This is where your your uh, expertise comes in. Yes, sir. Along with hockey as well. Love it, Dusty. Thanks, Dusty. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got in here. Let's see what we got in here. All right, we have ourselves a Chris Sabo. 
jersey. It looks like a red jersey, am I correct? Am I right? Am I, I wrong? So. It is the Cincinnati Reds custom jersey. Chris Sabo. Sabo. Okay. Chris Sabo. Matt, are you looking at his own? Uh, I can. I don't know a whole lot about him either. All right, he's currently a baseball coach. He uh, played third base for the, the Reds. Was drafted in the 30th round by the Montreal Expos. Well, uh, one rookie of the year was a three-time All-Star. Was a 1990 World Series champ. Uh, played for eight years. Uh, mostly with Cincinnati. Uh, played one year with St. Louis. One year with Baltimore. One year with the White Sox. Pretty solid numbers. It looks like we have uh, 898 hits, 116 home runs, 426 RBIs. And a World Series champ. He corked his bat. He sucks. He corked his bat. That's what he's most known for, it sounds like. He's That's... currently a coach for the... Uh... He's currently head coach at University of Akron. All right, let's see who's going to get this uh, former bat corker World Series champ turned college baseball coach. So did a lot of guys who didn't get in trouble for it. So, Same with those who took steroids. A lot of things. I'm still on the boat of just let everybody do everything. Let them use some sticky stuff. Let them cork the bats. Let them use like big bats. Let them use metal bats. Why not? So you, see, you want to see someone get hurt then. Huh? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going to Kyle. Kyle, that's it. Uh, if that's what that has to happen, sure. If someone gets hurt, then they should have picked a different sport. Sabo. All right. All right, so we got diamond number one. Let's get a box number in the chat, please. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, I think, at this point. Rob Manfred, you know what you're going to get from him, and... Can't do much about it right now. So. Yeah, they really should have waited for the end of the season, I think. Yeah, uh, it is. I just. I don't know. I, I don't really know what to it, say. In my personal I don't know what's. Hopefully, hopefully they decide to come up with their own thing. That's not rosin and sweat. Like, what's stopping Major League Baseball from. I guess nothing's stopping Major League Baseball from doing this, but. Uh, What's stopping Major League Baseball from creating their own sticky stuff? The only thing I, the only thing that takes time, investment, research, resources that they're not willing to do is that, that what you're trying really to do? Okay. But I don't think that's like a oh we'll install this next season kind of deal. That's like no. a three four year process. I'm yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I think if you came out and said, "Hey, we're going this is our plan. Three years from now, we're planning on ro rolling this out." Maybe. Yeah. 
Fair enough. But that takes a lot of time, research, a lot of money. You gotta communicate. You gotta get on the same page with the with the union with that. <clears throat> That's a very long and drawn out process. Fair enough. They can't even agree on the CBA, so. Which runs out in December. Which means we might be heading towards another lockout. Hell yeah. 30 of 60, here we go. Brandon, thanks for the box over. That sounds festive. I think that just means that the, the, I think it means players got to get better. I didn't know we had one of these in the room. <laughs> Fanatic COA may get a lot of people excited. Look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, here we go. We've got ourselves former Super Bowl MVP. This is gonna. I'm gonna. I'm about to. I'm about to stir them. People are gonna think it's somebody. It's not. The next COA, former Super Bowl MVP. He's won the Super Bowl. Only one of them. Recently. Recently. He's probably the real goat in my personal opinion. We have ourselves Chicago Bear third string quarterback Nick Foles. The sarcasm is just seeping. Going out to of your Ronald. Ronald, congratulations. That's a cool hit. The sarcasm is just seeping out of your pores, man. I know. I'm not a big fan of Nick Foles. It's cool though. I didn't know we even had that in the room. I didn't even know we had that available. Uh Love to see it. Not worried about it anymore. The players have to get better because the pitchers are able to use it. Sometimes it helps spin the ball better. Yeah, the Steelers just signed um, uh, Marvin yeah. Ingram. No. Melvin Ingram? Melvin Ingram. Thank you. The players have to get better because the pitchers are using it. Sometimes it helps spin the ball better. Either lower the mound or move, move the mound it back. back. That's the real. That's the real. It is a cool helmet. And move the fences in. Make the fences the same everywhere. Rebuild polo grounds. I don't think letting the players use is a good idea. So. Yep. Let the let the let the batters use metal bats. There you go. Pitchers get to use sticky stuff. Batters get to use metal bats. That's a dangerous game we're playing, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely destroy the bat, the wood bat industry. All in the middle. All in, oh. save the earth. Save there exactly. Oh, actually, you know it's probably worse. Metal manufacturing is definitely worse than bat manufacturing. Really? You know what? It might be the same. You're cutting down trees, so. Yeah, but you're still using water to, like produce things, though. That's still not good for the environment. That's on a complete. That's gonna be. That's a completely different topic. Yes, that we were. Let's just. How about we just throw sixteen-inch softballs, and then you will have no home runs. Everyone's gonna have Tommy John by like their second year. No, but it's just slow pitch softball oh, with slow sticky pitch stuff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> with sticky stuff. Yeah. All right. Up next, we got hard hit number two. A single box break. Looking for a box number in the chat, please. Uh, ah. yeah. That is a lot of stuff that won't happen ever. They did lower the mound. They have lowered the mound in the past, so let's just, actually... let's just go back to T ball. No pitcher at all. You right just line it up on the T. <laughs> you could call in like your your dad to throw a pitch yeah. to you. No little rosin sweat for pitchers, pine tar raiders, that's all. No, 
know about that. No, jeez, not the kind of the natural way. Huh? The way the game's supposed to be played. Yes. The organic. Bob, you're probably gonna be. You're probably gonna get your your uh, your wish. That's probably what's really gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know, that just sounds like a boring world to me. In a sport that's already dying. Yeah, I, I know they lowered the mom for Bob, for Bob Gibson. That's why I said it. I think it's... You gotta kind of... Um, account for that. I think my my opinion would be one of three things: you either lower the mound, move the mound back, or you bring the fences in. Three of sixty. Go back to the juice balls and stick stuff. I don't know. You're never going to satisfy anyone for the everyone. So. All right, here we go. We got ourselves a Cleland Farrell. Las Vegas Raiders jersey going to the AFC West and Aiden. Aiden, nice hit. Nathan, what's going on? What's up, Nathan? Baseball's always been like this, though. Either either the pitcher has the advantage or the batter has the advantage. It's been like that since the start. They always try to compensate, and then they overcompensate. And the other side gets pissed, so they do they do this and they do that. And you're never the, the the sport's been around for however many years now. And I think over 150 years. Yeah, it started like the 1850 or something like that. You're just never gonna satisfy everybody, so. It's all, but that's also like the '50s, though, Bob. The, yeah, the like, game. The, ever, the players have gotten faster. The players have gotten stronger. The players have gotten all, all of the above. Yeah, I mean, the game has to evolve a little bit. So, I'm not saying you're wrong necessarily, Bob, but it's certainly a conversation that needs to be had. I'm not saying I totally disagree with you either. I mean, you grew up, you didn't grow up as a kid throwing the ball with rosin. Sorry, so I might. Uh, let's get a box number for 4th of July Authentic number 1. Uh, Nathan, I do not game very much. I used to, but then... Life happened. Yeah. <laughs> you work two jobs, and... You don't have a lot of time to just sit around and do nothing. And when you do, you do want to do exactly that. Sit down and do nothing. Oh, yeah. Theo Epstein is the future of baseball. Now that's easy for me to say from Chicago, he's from here with the Cubbies. He's the future of baseball. Now we're into a different sport. No, Oscar Robinson was not a bad athlete. He just played.
played in a time where there was less bigger, stronger athletes. The, the, the travel rule has changed. A lot of things have changed in basketball. I mean, no one knows if Oscar Robinson could play in this game. Nobody knows if Larry Bird could play now. Who knows? This game is softer. In, I mean, basketball related, I think the game is softer than it was. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. So, in that... I want to be honest. I don't know what your point is. I apologize. But I'm not sure what you're trying to get. I think what we're trying to say is the game has changed. We understand that Rosin and Sweat and Pine Tar worked for Manal and Koufax. But the players, I, th I think what you have to do is you got to change the rules to fit the players. You can't just go with 1885 rules in a 2021 game. That's why there's leagues that change the rules every year or every other year, however long it takes. I know, but I, I feel like if the rules were in place, then people would maybe change the way they worked out. Up until this point, up until this point, there was no rule against substance. There was just an unwritten rule that said, no, you can't use unforced, uh, foreign substance. But until now, they didn't check. So if, if I'm, if I'm, a pitcher and I'm using spider tack I probably wouldn't do a lot of grip exercises because I'm using a substance and that's one reason that Tyler Glass now got injured because he was using sticky stuff and then he went and threw just as hard as he was with the sticky stuff but he's got to grip the ball harder because he's got no sticky stuff and now he's out for the rest of the season was on pace for I don't know a lot about baseball maybe just talking about my butt but he was on pace to maybe be a Cy Young winner and now he's out for the rest of the year 25 50. Again, please tell me if I'm I'm talking out my butt. But I think I think insert I think sports need to change rules at some time. Or else they'll just be stuck in the past. And I think that maybe is a problem with Major League Baseball. I just think it's, I think it's difficult to compare athletes today versus back in the day because it was oh, the technology everything was, everything is different right it, than was, it was there's a different time yeah i mean you compare it like wayne gretzky for example like gretzky played an era where the goaltending was way worse the talent was way way worse um, i'm not saying he wouldn't be a good player today but would he score 2,000 points in the national hockey league i'm not sure about that um it's difficult to make it's you kind of I think it's you're kind of it's difficult to make parallels with that so um, it's a good discussion to have but I think it can there's a lot of gray area I think when it comes to all this stuff so in every single sport I'm not bad now in the great one I, I he's the greatest player of all time but I think if he was to be playing today, with the way he played the game back then, I'm not sure he'd be that good. But if he grew up in this time, he he might be better than Connor McDavid. I just think it's it's so difficult to because it's all imagination, right? I mean, we don't he's not playing it's everything right now. We can spe you speculate everything. Right, it's all speculation. I, I just it's difficult to make those parallels and those crossroads. I mean, it's just not easy. And the, here's the fun thing about this. We could discuss this for hours on end. But guess what? We don't get to make a decision. Right. We don't get to we get we, we don't get to choose. In a perfect world, maybe some of us would love sticky stuff, steroids and cork bats. And maybe in a perfect world, everyone would love to have Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig still playing. But we can't have that. So at this point that's why we just talk about it or discuss it. No one's wrong. It's just a I think a lot of it has to do with the money these days. The money people do things that um, they didn't do back in the day because the money is so you make millions Skanked and in. millions of dollars these days by being good at a sport casual when, king bro when back in the day that wasn't that wasn't how it was no I mean there's a lot of guys early, early you know a lot of guys who had two jobs and based, right. you know baseball or yeah. their, whatever sport they played professionally was just a, a weekend thing for them 
Right. All right, here we go. Got ourselves a Dallas Cowboy full-size Eclipse Authentic. We have Randy White, Hall of Fame class of 94, going to the NFC East, and Justin Webb. Justin, I said... So, Bob, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I, I totally get it. Bob, we also live in two completely different eras. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. To a certain extent, I agree with what you're saying. I played the sport. I personally have played baseball. And Use all the sticky stuff. You have no idea. I never used any of that stuff. It's a liar. And to me, if you're getting paid millions of dollars to throw a ball as hard as you can over a 17-inch plate, you should be able to do that 100 times a day. Uh, every five days, consistently. Uh, I mean, nobody's arguing that Jim Brown is a goat, but I don't think. He... Just, I'm just gonna be quiet. I'm not gonna break. I'm gonna be. Quiet. But that's the thing. Like he was so good in his time. Would his game translate to today? No. I think I think we'd have to just say no because it, I don't think it's. I don't think it would. See, I think football is tough because. But the game of football. There were no linebackers running four three forties in the fifties and sixties. Fair. Padding's different. Guys are stronger. Guys are bigger. But I would argue that a guy like Jim Brown probably would succeed in a game like today. No, I mean Derek Henry is probably a good example of a, 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 a comparison. I mean, there's been bad dudes playing in the NFL for a long time. And back in the day, and the NFL was pretty much a run-first game. Not only is all it's passing, Pass, now. passing strong. The quarterback is the most important position in the field. That's right. QB one, number two, a double box break. Let's get a box number, two box numbers in the chat, please. Honestly, the quarterback position is probably the most important position in the organization. The entire organization. One could argue. Yeah, I mean, the tall Tyler Glass now thing, I, I, I do get it, but at the same time, cheating, man. <laughs> um, like I said, you can pay millions of dollars to throw the ball over a 17-inch plate from 60 feet 6 inches. You shouldn't have an issue doing that on a day-to-day -day basis, so... something that you had done your entire life. You picked up a baseball at six, seven years old, maybe even younger, all throughout high school. You went to college, all throughout college, all throughout the minors. Figured out. Soccer? Yeah, I, I can't honestly say that I follow soccer very closely, even really follow soccer at all. So, just going to have to trust your judgment on that one, Dusty. Let's get two box numbers in the chat, please. Yeah, 5, 15, 18, 20, 23, 24. I personally don't think we should allow court backs and people to juice. I think that's a slippery slope. Uh, I think the juicing is a little bit much because that that affects people's like actual life. Yeah, that's like you could yeah. die young. Yeah, if you're taking. Like I think I think I think you could modify equipment in a way. I don't know if we need cork bats, but maybe like bigger barrel bats. I don't know. Um, oh, you just oh no, that's another home run. I just think the uh, juicing. No, you don't. screw it. Never mind. The juicing is. It's. I don't think that's a solution. No, absolutely not. I mean, it also doesn't make you, like, a better baseball player. It just makes you better at recovery right. and less fatigue. It doesn't actually make you, like, be able to see the ball better. 
Box number QB1, number two, a double box break. We got five, 15, 18, 20, 23, 24. Can't. Tyler, George, Nestor, Ronald, Justin, Scott. Can't that like affect your like mental like ability to? Uh, all of the above, yeah. Okay. It's terrible. No. Like memory loss and stuff? Yeah, all of the above. It makes you like rage once you take enough of it. You know, you could, like, I mean, there's plenty of people who have, who took steroids, you know, who have ended their life, you know. And then through all of this, forgot to lower the dodge. If you just lower to, like, oh, hit Matt Foster right in the head, and still got played on. All right. That's, that's I'm going to lower it to 15.23. What should I lower it to? One thirty. One thirty. It, it started at one fifty, right? Yeah. yeah perfect. I guess it's appropriate that I have my uh, my Field of Dream speech shirt on today. Fifteen or fifty. JSA, COA. Absolutely, Bob. We got four spots remaining in number three. Got ourselves a Denver Bronco hit. We got Craig Morton. Going to Scott Snyder in the AFC West. Scott is it. Yeah, the Field of Dreams game is the yeah, 13, something like that, 12. Our uh, Chicago White Sox versus the New York Yankees in Dyersville, Iowa. Which, during the pandemic, my dad and I took a ride out there. It's like just west of Davenport, I think. Or no, west of Dubuque, I think. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's historic, but not much out there. It's pretty, uh, pretty much God's country. Yeah, I got my, uh, my Feel the Dream shirt on today. I got the whole speech on the back of my shirt. With the with Shoeless Joe on the front. Forty-three of fifty. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, the James Earl Jones speech, yep. Alright. Make it see you white. Ourselves a Pittsburgh Steeler hit. We have wide receiver Chase Claypool. What a Ronald. Ronald, nice hit. Uh, yes, and we did, and I believe you won. I'll check in, uh, in one moment. Dusty, how far away is that from you? Three hours, huh? Yeah, and you want a Clellan Farrell jersey. So are you in Iowa? That's kind of a personal question, but... Oh, Des Moines, okay. So it'll take you three hours to drive home. Hmm. Back to the cities, I'm assuming. The Twin Cities.
prior leg, right? Prior leg, Minnesota. Yeah, my uh, my family was originally from. Um, my grandparents are from St. Paul, but my mom was born in St. Paul and then moved out to Burnsville. So, and then once my grandparents moved out of their house, they actually moved to Prior Lake. So I'm very familiar with Prior Lake. Posting a quad for Bob. Alrighty, thank you, sir. Well, let's get two box numbers in the chat, please. Done the 4th of July mixer yet, David? All right, we got 5, 18, 20, 24. Don't sound like a character from Fargo. No, I was born and raised here, so. Uh, in Chicago. Uh, my mom actually does not have much of an accent either, but both of her brothers, uh, my, both, both my grandparents did. Um, yeah, my uncles. I think three of my uncles had a really thick Minnesota accent. We got George, Tyler, Jason, Chris. We got uh, boxes 5, 18, 20, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Please don't be shy. Yeah. That's the funny thing about the East Coast is there's a wide range of accents. The Midwest, you don't really get as much. You got a few, I guess. No, we haven't done Mega Mixer yet. George, Tyler, Jason, Chris. 524. Oh, cool. Thank you. All right, Jason. Thanks. My bad. Ruin my eyes. I appreciate that. We got five of fifty. Right. 
JSA. See you away. We got ourselves a Miami Dolphin Mini quarterback, Xavier Howard. Going to the AFC East and George Dean. George, nice hit. You're absolutely right, Dusty. Oh, yeah. That was my grandma's big one. Oh, yeah. You betcha. <laughs> <clears throat> Twenty-four fifty. Got a JSA COA. We got a Saints mini. We got cornerback Marshawn Lattimore. Going to Tyler Hayes. One moment here. Uh, it was a Reggie, uh, Randy White, and uh, Matt, what's yours? Uh, mine is Matt Dash Bohannon Dash One. Huh, nice. B O H A N O N. Correct. That's called friendship. <clears throat> uh, Bob, that is one movie I had not seen. I know. Oh, you know what? I don't even have my. Uh, what? Sorry. Sorry. Right. I know that's a popular movie. I've not seen that movie. Yet. It's also a show now. It is indeed. Or was a show and then a movie? Uh, I, I'm also the same. I've not seen the Fargo either of them. My my dad has. And my parents have. <laughs> Yeah, because my dad always, my dad's from Chicago. He always gives my mom crap that it's, that's how she grew up. The movie Fargo is how she grew up. And she always gets so pissed about it. <laughs> you remember that Super Bowl commercial with Nona Ryder? She's like laying on the side of the road. Yeah. That's from Fargo. Wait, I'm it's just, sorry. It's Winona, which is where my parents went to college. And um, she was pissed about that one too. Like that's not what it, that's not what it looked like. And... Okay. Alright. Fair enough. Sorry, Mom. Fair enough. She was named after the city. I think that's correct. But right, I have been to enough. Winona, Minnesota, and it does not look like how it looked in the commercial. Liars. 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 the Dutch. Alright. Let's go uh well now one thousand. Please. You have a quick little run down here. Please and thank you. Um the quad box break live break number four has no one's bought into it yet. Live break number three for the hard hitting jersey series. Five spots remaining there. Batter up mixer. Ten spots remaining. Um, oh, 
we did sell out of the mega jersey. Looks like it. That's okay. We'll get to it. Not bad. I'll keep the rundown going. We got uh, eight spots left in diamond number two. Uh, the mega jersey did sell out, so we'll get that updated momentarily. Uh, eight spots left in Fourth of July mixer. Uh, the Dutch auction is at one hundred fifteen dollars. We got fifteen spots remaining in the twenty twenty Panini one football card box. Six spots left in Flake Crate. Seven spots left triple break mixer. Let's get a box number in the chat, please. Four. Mega Jersey break. Luigi, thank you. one in on a quad. Alrighty, there we go. Someone's gotta be. Someone's gotta do it. Alright, here we go. 39 of 60. Chris Joseph. Here we go. Got ourselves a, oh, nice little hit right here. A for, former Bulls great. We got Artist Gilmore. That's the number three. Hall of Fame class of 2011. Going to Chris Gibbs. Chris, nice hit. Artist Gilmore, seven feet, two inches tall. You know that? I did not. That's incredible. Chris Joseph, if you're in the chat, man, um, do you want this... Uh, hard hitting mystery box to be open live on camera, or do you want us to send it to you, Chris Joseph? Chris was one of our guys live the other night on Saturday. Yeah, who was part of the uh, extravaganza? The extravaganza. Thank you. Live box thirty eight. All right. Was it hard hitting? Hard hitting. Oh boy. All right. 38. See if we can find it. Have faith in that one. I mean, we did, we did, uh, we did uh, organize, so we should be fine. The force is strong in you. Thank you. May the force be with you. Always. And with you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> like we're in church. Alrighty, here we go. Chris, good luck. 38 of 60. Got ourselves a... Alright, another headliner hit. Brian Dawkins. Nice. Headliner. b Doc. Player hitting the most home runs in 2000, 2000s. Oh boy. I'm gonna go Pujols. That's a good guess. Very good guess. In fact, that's an outstanding guess. I was wrong though, so it's, it's guess sucks. Are you sure, Bob? <laughs> he was third. Who, who hit more home runs than Albert Pujols? Barry Bonds. Also a nice guess. 
Vlad G, that's a good one too. Also very good guy. Juan Uribe. Yeah, right, exactly. Paul Kanurka. A Rod. A Rod. Interesting. I guess I would not have said that, but. I don't really believe that's correct, but that's correct. I guess that's what happens when you choose. Jim Tomey in there somewhere? Yeah, Jim Tomey's gotta be in there. Or Bonds has gotta be number two. What about the 90s? Oh boy. The 90s? Oh. I would say. Oh wow. I'm gonna go with McGuire. Or Sosa. Mm. Or. Uh, you think I'm wrong? Yeah, I think Sosa. Griffey. I would say Griffey is a good guess. That's a really good guess. That's a good guess. Hey, that's my boy, Joe. What's up, man? How you doing? It's been a while since I've seen your name in the chat. Ripkin in the in the nineties? I guess I for some reason I don't see Do you. I don't know if it's a home run hitter though. I yeah, know. I don't feel Griff Griffey number two. two? Wait, more home runs than Tomei had number was number two in the two thousands? You're kidding me. He hit more home runs than Alvaro Pujols. That's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. You looking it up? Yes. <laughs> uh, did we have we not guessed anybody? I don't can't think of anybody who's hit from, from more home run than Kenny Ken Griffey Jr. in the nineties. Oh, by two home runs. Okay, fair enough. That still shocks me. Wow. 90s, 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 90s. McGuire in the 90s. Oh, I was right. I was right. Really? Let's go! Not have said that either. It was my first guess. 80s. Oh, boy. Now we're getting to a time that I don't have a singular idea. Uh, Reggie Jackson. That's a good guess. I think that might be the only guess I have. Damn it. I'm trying to think of MLB the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I don't know. I don't know. So Barry Bonds is nowhere on the Yankees list, huh? Is it because he used steroids and they took him off all the lists? Because that doesn't that. That's a good question. That's crazy. Mike Schmidt in the 80s. Beats me. Beats me. Mike Schmidt. Me. Third baseman for the Phillies. All right, don't go any fast. Don't go, don't go any more. They're actually doing a, uh, a 30 for 30 on him on ESPN. Is that right? Yeah. He was third baseman for who? The Phillies? Phillies. Arguably for one of the best Philly players in the history of the sport of their team. Who had the most wins in the 2000s? Pitching wise. Who had the most wins? I'm not looking it up right now, but. If I were. No. <laughs> if I was to do this, what would the answer be? If I were be? to look it up, what would the answer be? Give me one moment, please. It's like, I actually don't know. What, all right, what do you want? Most wins in the 2000s? Most right? wins in, uh... You got it? Yeah. Oh, shit, shoot. Hold on one second, one second. Uh, Clemens, no. Give me a second here. Okay. Mm. That's correct. Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit. 
Andy Fetter had 148. That's amazing. From the 2000s. Then it went Randy Johnson, then Jamie Moyer. Then Roy Holiday, Tim Hudson, Roy Oswald, CeCe Sabathia, Mark Burley. Mark Burley, wow. Greg Maddox, and then Mike Muzina. Mike Muzina. Muzina. Hall of Famer. Muzina. Muzina. I think everyone, uh, Jamie Moyer, is not in the Hall of Fame. Hey, Bob, you think CeCe will be in the Hall of Fame? Right away. I think he'll get in eventually, though. <laughs> Look at the play by Burley. Of course. Are we talking between the leg? Yes. It was incredible. And then Paulie with the bare ball. Paulie with, with the, the bare hand the bare right there. Hand, yes. That was exciting. That was exciting stuff. Mm. Mark Burley will live in infamy for that play. Will forever hold a place in my heart. Yep. I was actually watching that play live when it happened. I have a weird remembrance. I was also, but I also think I've just seen it enough on YouTube that I feel like I've seen it live, but I don't... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Remember the commercial. What's the commercial? You guys remember the commercial? Big Timmy Jim. I don't remember that commercial. I don't know who Big Timmy Jim is. I don't either. The ESPN one. Big Timmy Jim. Joe, do you know what that is? Tim Lincecum? Tim Lincecum. I'm looking at it right now. Big time Jimmy. Wait, Big Tim, big time Timmy Jim Lincecum. We have not done the flake raid. Still got six spots left, Tyler. I can't play this. I remember Tim Lincecum. Big time Timmy Jim Lincecum. Nope, I do not remember that one. to watch it after the break. Interesting. Some of those Let's come had Matt Bohan in there before Matt Bohan. Yeah, he did indeed. That's correct. Yes, he did. Don't get it twisted. He was kind of kind of a freak guy. I don't remember a lot of the uh, ESPN commercials. Do you? No. We already did it, London. We did it this morning. Uh, this morning. The be we read did it right at the beginning of the break. I feel like there were some good ones though. There were definitely were. I'm sure, you can sit down and watch all of them. The Ovechkin ones. I feel like I remember the Jorge Posada one. Um, oh, God. I feel like I remember that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hip, hip. Jorge. <laughs> yeah. Hip, hip. Jorge. London, unfortunately, no. You did not win. Mascot ones, yeah, the mascot ones are good. Steve Irwin, oh yes, that's, I love that one too. And Steve Irwin, when he he, they're going up. Yes, I remember this one. It's him and John Anderson. Okay. And they're waiting at the elevator. Ooh. And My baseball. Yo, yo, just hit a bomb. B. Ooh. What's the score? Three two. Nice. So they're waiting at the elevator. He they hit the button and the elevator door opens. And it's the Florida Gator mascot. Beautiful. I know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> That's so great. He like jumps into Steve Irwin mode. He's like, "Hold on a second. This is a, look at this beauty." And he like goes and he tackles the the, the Gator. 
Oh god, it's just classic. I'm gonna have to look up ESPN. We're definitely watching that one as a show. I'm gonna have to look up ESPN commercial compilation now. That is hilarious. Whoever whoever thought of that is doing is doing their job correctly. I hope they're doing well. Yes. Even though Steve Irwin, R.I.P. Absolutely. Is not. Damn Stingray. Yeah, the Steve Irwin one is gets classic. I love that one. <laughs> hip hip hoe. Right, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look up and see how long of a compilation I can find because I might be doing what Dustin's doing too before I go to bed. <laughs> ESPN. Um, I wish I could speak like the in the Australian accent, but I can't. But I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to try. Yeah. Boy, boy, look at that over there. Look at that. Look at that beauty over there. Wait up. Hold. Look at it. Look at it. You look at that gator in its natural habitat. It's hilarious. That might be my favorite one. Yes, that's it. That's what he says. Crocky. Crocky. She's a beautiful Sheila. Oh, gotta be a longer version. Top 40 best sports com- sports center commercials is an 18 minute long video. Oh, Crocky. Steve Irwin. Sometimes I go in phases with him. Sometimes I'll just sit down and watch YouTube videos of him. Crocky. Who, Steve Irwin? Yeah. Hey, no way. Really? Mm-hmm. That's nice. I do the same thing with Gordon Ramsay. I'll watch like an hour of his videos. I've seen a, a couple of those. So have I. Yep. I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, like you said, he's a clone. He doesn't strike me as some, like, Steve. He just seemed like one of those guys that would just jump in the mud and just do it. Robert doesn't seem like that. Robert is more of like a really, 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 really professional zookeeper. Right. Whereas Steve was like a wild man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Steve was like out in the... out. In the yeah. P- Bindi does look like her mother. She just got married, I think. And she, she might have actually just had a kid, too. Yeah, she did. It's that's so right. crazy to think of. Because like when we were kids, they were like younger than we were. Are they the same age as us? Um, he, I think she's older than him, so he, she's like twenty two. I want to say. Oh, that's so crazy. So she's like right around your age. Yeah. I'm a little bit older than her, but right. and he's like eighteen or nineteen or whatever he is. That's now. so crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, there's like there's like a couple of people that I go in like phases with, probably. And then of course they give you like recommended videos, so I'll be like, oh that looks cool. And I'll get like an watch an hour straight of just Gordon Ramsay yelling at people or <laughs> really just... rating food or and then the other the other one is Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin, I can get hooked on him pretty quickly too. True. Yeah, that's the Perkins. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I've never heard that in my entire life. Me either. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, the funny, the fun thing about Steve Irwin is that he just, he didn't really care about his body. Like, he would just throw himself everywhere. And he just, like you said, loved wildlife. and It's a nature show. Interesting. You'd handle animals like it was nothing. He was just so trained. Like, yeah. he knew where to, like... <sighs> Why? Why? I don't know, it's sad. I remember, actually remember that day. That I remember finding out that he got killed. Damn. I don't remember where I, where I was or anything like that. What year but... was this? Really? 2006? Mm-hmm. Wow, what the hell? I've been gone for 15 years. That's so crazy, dude. 
That's so crazy, dude. I just, I just love his body language, too. They're just, like, the way he moved and just the way he, like, everything about him you just loved. Jungle Jack Hanna. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, Jack Hanna had a uh, nature show on, like, every Saturday after, Saturday morning on, like, NBC because they nice. used to do, like, the educational Cinematar Crunch. Can't can't look at him the same way now. <laughs> you can't look at, at Cinematar so, Crunch the same way. Absolutely now. not. Yeah, for me, Steve Irwin takes the cake. So. And honestly, his, his wife, like, his the wife narrates a lot of their, his videos. She does yeah. a really good job of narrating the videos. <laughs> <laughs> He's so turning to bits of... <laughs> uh, oh, they have a show called Crikey. It's the Irwins. Mm -hmm. I've watched, like, one episode. <laughs> not a very loyal fan, are you? Well, I mean, it's not him. Doesn't it doesn't it doesn't hit this? What? Wait, yo, is wait is? Oh, please tell me, please tell me it's not like Hulu or something. It's on Hulu. It is. It is. Wow. The Crocodile Hunter is on Hulu. Oh, the Crocodile Hunter is. Yes. Oh wow. Three spots left there, Bob. For those who are wondering, the Crocodile Hunter is on Hulu. That's a game changer right there. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up right now because <laughs> I don't know how much I believe the internet. That's huge. That is very. I'm adding it to my list. That might be it tonight. After I'm watching the, the entire thing. <laughs> after the ESPN commercials. <laughs> I'm going through it. I'm going to cry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm going uh, to cry myself to sleep tonight. Shh. It's okay. <laughs> is it on there? Hold on, wait, wait. Hold on, wait, hold on. Give me a second. Sorry. False alarm. Oh, let me look it up here. You got. Uh, they've got five seasons of it. Five seasons. Wow. They have five seasons. A total of like fifty episodes. Nice. That's doable. They have that, so add to my stuff for sure. Then they have. Uh, <laughs> Crocodile Hunter Best Of. So that's a f one season of it. Six episodes of that. Do you have HBO Max? Yes. <laughs> Woo! Give me a second. I'm going to look it up. Uh, I don't want to stream Space Jam 2 yet. Thanks, though. Thanks for asking. All I know is LeBron went four for five for eight points. Wow. Pathetic. One second here. This is the real research right here, people. They got Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. That's a that's a movie. Wait, what? It's an hour movie. Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. That looks cool too. Okay. The Irwins are going to see a spike in views and sales tonight because of us. Yeah, okay, so you can watch the Crocodile Hunter, the documentary series on Hulu. You can watch the Crocodile Hunter collision course on HBO Max. Nice. You're welcome. That's what you really came here for. I'm a big fan. Nice. Bob, you're cooking now. I just saw my sister has Hulu too. We were watching a show today. Apparently, uh, Paul McCartney's got like a documentary out. Okay. It's like a six part documentary. 
about his all of his stuff, his life and stuff. So the Beatles and such. That looks. I want to watch that too. It's called McCartney. On Hulu. On Hulu. And Disney Plus. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Very cool. Wow. Oh, you get ESPN Plus too. I've been debating on whether or not to get it. I just want to watch all the thirty for thirties. I want to have those available. That's awesome. And you can watch all the fights too. That would have say that would help me a little bit during the McGregor fight. Mm-hmm. Trying to find it on Twitch. Nice fit, fashion icon, exactly. That uh, that beige like jumpsuit joint with the shorts and. Sp- I mean, Absolutely. dude, he, he has only four buttons. He's got you showing off the chest yes. hair. Yes. Dripping, dude. Absolutely dripping. How many think? How many pairs of those do you think he owned? Bro, the entire closet is the beige joint, bro. But I feel like he's one of those kind of guys that didn't have a lot, so he probably had, like, three pairs of them. And he just funneled through, like, three pairs his entire life. It's kind of nasty, actually, now I just think about it, but... I mean, he doesn't strike me as, like, a whole wardrobe kind of a guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean... He probably just had I, a... I looked up Steve Irwin, I'm looking through the images, and every single image is him. There's no... There's no switch-up, man. He's rocking the beige, button-up, with the shorts, with the beautiful blonde locks. Oh, there's a long-sleeve tee! He's got a long-sleeve button-up. Still got only three buttons, bro. He still, he still, he still has it right here, right here, dog. Nice. Oh man. I would love to go to Australia. Also correct. Although there's a whole different level of bugs there, which I, I don't know if I'm ready for that, and snakes. That. Kind of scares me a little bit, but I can get over that. I can actually probably get over the bugs, but the snakes kind of scares me a little bit. Deet is deet. I don't know what that means to you. Deet is like uh, the bug repellent. How is it? Or in bug repellent, deep yeah, deep woods off. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's preventing me from going. If they just kind of, you see all those like, whatever they call like huntsman spiders and those huge ass, those huge spiders and all that. You can say huge ass spiders. Yeah, the, all those. I'm I'm not really a spider guy. I'm also not a spider guy. I don't overly mind bugs. Like, I can get through bugs. Right, right. But the spiders, man, the, that just freaks me out. And, and the, the snakes. I don't think I can do the snakes. Water joint, well, that, that also doesn't help me either. Oh, yeah, the alligators. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm afraid of a kangaroo punching me in the nose. <laughs> Yeah, jellyfish aren't good. Don't trust the car- coral. Carol. Coral. Oh, boy. Sounds like we're not going. Yeah. Sounds like we are too scared to go to Australia. Is it a huntsman spider? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I don't want to look it up. I'm going to look it up. I think it's a huntsman. I think a woods woodsman spider. Is it a woodsman? Is that even a thing? I'm sure it is. Is there a lumberjack spider that just ro- ro- dons a, an axe? Hey, Joe. Joe Molenski, if you're still watching, what's the name of the spider that's in Wisconsin that you had at your house? Was it a huntsman spider? Yeah, these things are nasty, man. Oof. Maybe it was a brown recluse. Yeah, I'm telling you, these, these huntsman spiders are like the uh, huntsman spiders are like the size of a football. I'm sorry, what? These huntsman spiders are I'm like, sorry. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, they're huge. 
And they're hairy. Ugh, no thanks. Do they kill you? I don't I don't think they can bite, but they're just huge. Oh, they're just massive. They're a big as hell. spider? Was that it? I thought you had like a... Was it a brown recluse or... A wolf spider? Was that what it was? Oh my god, that thing's nasty too. Fishing spider? Ugh. They eat fish. <laughs> that is terrifying. Was it a wolf spider, Joe? Spiders are the most widely distributed venomous creatures in Australia. Oh, this But they still can be in your bed, and that's not something I'm okay with. Or your mouth. <laughs> I feel like you never know, that heard that that story of like a you eat like seven spiders throughout your life. Yeah. I feel like that came from Australia. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. Ah. Uh, you don't do spiders either. Oh man, it's not really like my thing. Like it's just meh. Nah. I I don't know, man. I feel ya. I'm kind of the same way. So. I'm not a bug guy. Not really. Like, I don't mind, like, looking at that. Here's the thing. I don't mind looking at them at the zoo, but, like, if they're outside. Like, if there's one in the house, like, I'll, I'm not afraid to pick up a spider and, and take it outside, but. Or kill it. But yeah. If it's over the size of, like, a nickel, then I'm. Or, like, a dime. Or not a dime. A quarter, I'm out. If you were. If you want to see a scary animal, Google. I'm okay. I feel like we've gone down a rabbit hole here. I feel like now now people know what we're afraid of. And just gonna... I saw this thing that I wasn't sure if it was real or not, but it was like the mixture between like uh, a freaking like a spider and a scorpion. And I don't know if it was real or like a prop or something. That was... All right, the quad's ready for you. <laughs> cool. Hey, just in case you're wondering, um, Wild Pitch... There was a man on first and second, now there's a man on second and third. No outs, bottom seven. Nice. Alright. We've got uh, a quad ready to roll. Let's go flower boxes in the in the chat, please. Let's have an insect mixer. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thanks, Chad. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the wolf spider. I remember you telling me about it. No, no, just, no. Just no. Nasty. no, thank you. Haha, <laughs> no. 1827, perfect. Need two more, please. And that's not far away from us. Oh my god. I think wolf spider... Is the wolf spider... Joe, is the wolf spider the, um, the spider from Harry Potter? Oh! Gavin Sheets walk off three run shot. Really? And, and an absolute piss missile. <laughs> an absolute piss missile. <laughs> Woo! Good game. GG. GG. Sox win. You're gonna watch that one in the highlights. You're gonna lose your mind. That was a that was a no doubter. Absolutely yoked that sucker. Three one count two. Sorry, right, y'all. Thanks for 18, 27, 24, 25. Ooh, we don't have 24. We don't have 24. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we don't have 24. 28. Oh, my God. GG, man. Gavin, she's and Come on, bat flip it. Bat flip it, Gavin. Oh, my God. Like, no doubter. Like, no doubter. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You love it. You love to see it. You love to see it. The youngins, man. You love to see it. That guy's going to be upset. I don't know why they left him in. 
box time. Here we go. 1850 QB one mini. Whew. I got goosebumps. Yeah? I got, go I got goosebumps. Fanatic COA. We got ourselves the brand new QB1 for the Detroit Lions. We have Jared Goff. It's a headliner, right? Going to Brandon. Brandon Fox, nice hit. Holy sheets. Holy sheets. Holy sheets. Was it to left field or right field? Uh, right field. He's, he's a left-handed batter, so. He, uh, but, oh my goodness. They were down one, right? They were down one, so they won 5-3. Nice. I would highly recommend the last, watching the, the bottom seven. Because Brian Good, Goodwin got on in the shift in a single. Hit by pitch, Andrew Vaughn. Uh, wild pitch, 3-1 count. Bomb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 25 of 50. We got it back at COA. Got ourselves a, oh, this is cool. Little Clemson Tiger National Championship mini helmet, T. Higgins. Going to the AFC North and Johnny Lang. Johnny, nice hit. Dusty, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for the conversation. Hopefully we'll see you soon. We'll see you later, Dusty. Thank you. 27 of 50. Wow. Wow. Go Twins. Boo. JSA CEO. Oh, I, you know what? I forgot Dusty was a Twins fan. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> and he did that, and Dusty's like, all right, guys, peace. All right, we got ourselves a Javon Curse. Titans mini going to the AFC South and Ronald. Ronald, that's it. You go Ronnie. Ronald. Might be going to the uh, Brewers White Sox game on uh, on uh, Saturday. You? Yep. I'm thinking about it. Nice. Thinking about it. Always been a fan of Miller Park. Oh, you're going to go up there? Yeah. Oh. Have you ever been up there? I have. I, uh, I've been to, I think, two or three Brewers games. Um, I actually went to a, I want to say it was like 2018. The White Sox had a preseason game in Miller Park. Nice. I mean, we weren't going to know if we didn't have a Luis Robert and Eloy Jimenez injuries. All right, our final mini in our quad is 28 of 50. All right, we got a, uh, we got a JSA. JSA COA. Got a Cowboys mini. We got Hall of Famer Bob Lilly. 
Nice hit right there. Going to the NFC East and Kevin. Kevin, nice hit. Must be in a four-year winners, huh? We did. Nice. Kevin Malloy. Next, we got hard hit number three, a single box break. Let's get a box number in the chat, please. I dibble dabble in them. I dibble dabble in the Harry Potters. Never read the books. No? Oh man, I... You I, never wanted to be a wizard? No, I never wanted to be a wizard, Harry. Yeah, they're, You've I, seen I, all the movies, though? I've seen all the movies, yeah. I know what happens. I haven't seen them in a while, though. Yeah, it's like a weekly occurrence in my house. My mom and my sister are huge fans. Gotcha, gotcha, Watch for it sure. All the time. Aiden, thank you. Gotcha, for sure. Gotcha, for sure. I'm pretty sure the. the remember the spider? Yeah, the big, big the ass spider. spider. I'm pretty sure it was a wolf spider. Okay. For some reason, that was bothering me. We got two of 60. We got ourselves. Oh, nice little hit right here. We have a Chicago Bears tight end, Cole Komet. Should have a pretty big year this year. That's what our hope is. My hope is for him. Cole Komet. Fighting Irish. Former Fighting Irish, obviously. Or Chris Joseph. Which do you like better? Uh, I'm more of a Lord of the Rings fan than Harry Potter, I think. Um, I like them both for different reasons. Huh. You would be the guy to answer the question like that. <laughs> it's a very like answer like, the question. It's like a lawyer Matt. response. Ah, well, it depends. Well, what day is it? Is it a Tuesday? Not depends. Is it a Thursday at four o'clock? Game never, of Thrones. Never. I'm in the middle of Game of Thrones. Don't say anything. I'm I'm, I'm watching it right now. Don't say anything. Game of Thrones is awesome. That's like a completely different thing. Cause that's like a whole series. Like if, now, if it was like Game of Thrones movies, only each episode's like a movie because they're like fifty, they're like sixty some minutes. Lord of the Rings is the best movie series about walking I've ever seen. Walking and searching. That is the best. The best uh, scavenger hunt movie of all time. Absolutely. Zero doubt about it. There's just iconic moments in all of them. It's true. There's quotes. There's a lot of great. Yeah. Hey, Joe, did you ever see the end of Game of Thrones? I know you guys were watching it for a while. Did you guys finish it? Seriously? They watched all the way up to the end of the... Season 8? All the way up to season 8. Yeah. And don't say anything, because Garrett hasn't seen it, so... I'm, I'm working on it right now. Working on it right now, watching it with the girlfriend. So you're like on what season? We might almost be at season two. Like I oh, so you're wow, so you're early on. Yeah. Season. So you're you're you haven't finished season I one. I don't think yet? we still are seeing on season one. Oh boy. We just don't we don't get to hang out a lot in. Edward Stark. Ned Stark. I saw him die. 
Oh, you saw him die. I know it's. I know that. I know what you're talking about. What season you on? Yeah, I think I'm on season one still. So. I actually let me look on HBO real quick. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I might, we might have started season two. If I'm. Well, I think that I think the end of the first season is him dying. Well, then we might be on season two then. Because that's a big moment. Okay, I'm obviously. looking at it. I'm looking at it. Oh, my girl! Oh, it's at my girlfriend's account. Uh, here, well, I'll just look at it. We're d- we definitely watch it on her account. That's okay. Um, one moment here. One moment here. I might be able to like sort of tell you where we are. So the question is, do you think you're? What house would you be in for Harry Potter? Oh God. That's a great question. Everyone always wants to say Gryffindor, right? <laughs> I'm definitely a part of Gryffindor. Uh, but I would say... Hufflepuff? Yeah, you know what? I might be... A Ravenclaw? I'm going to go where like halfway through season two. Okay. See, I don't know anything about any of the houses. So it's... Slytherin is like the... The pure bloods. Okay, not me. That are like I'm supposed to be like above everyone else. Okay, definitely not me. Um, Gryffindor is brave, loyal, courageous. Okay, I have two of those probably. Um, Ravenclaw are the smart ones. Okay. And then Hufflepuff is everyone else. Oh god. <laughs> I, I you know I think I might be able to slide into Gryffindor. I might be able to. <laughs> I might be able to slip a 20 in the exam or something. Like, I might. <laughs> but I, other than that, I might be just helpful. Just so you know, the starting hat does take into account your choice. What do you mean? You don't remember the first the first movie with the starting hat? I know, with but the starting what, hat what, what had, choice do you mean? You can, you can, like, have your opinion on what house you want to oh, go at. Oh, okay. Because remember Harry's like, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Oh. And then he puts him in Slytherin. No, then he puts him in Gryffindor. Oh, okay. You, the, hat, the hat does take into account your... What what my head is thinking. What your head is thinking. Okay. That's correct. So if I say, then he, he's going to be nice to me or he's going to be not so nice He'll take into account. I don't uh, think it's, you can't choose for yourself. Oh, you can just you can just try and persuade him. Correct. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You put your two cents in and he's okay. like, okay. Because I, like, I think I could be a real dominant on the Quidditch field. Really? I think so. Would you be a beater or a chaser oh, or God. a keeper? Maybe or more a of a seeker. I probably be more, more of a keeper. I think I, I think I could man the goal. Keep man, the ball out of the net. I think I could man, man the goal pretty well. Yeah. The goals, because there's three of them. There are three. Because I know. <laughs> I've experienced it. I've experienced one beautiful Harry Potter night at the dogs before. Oh God, that's all right. All right. I think we're gonna go with last call here. If you want to help us fill up anything else, Hunger Games. Never got into Hunger Games. I'm going to lower the Dutch real quick. Never got an Hunger Games. Lowering it to 80. 80. Beautiful. 80 on the Dutch for the T. Higgins Lunar Eclipse Mini. I uh, never got into Hunger Games. No? Seen the first one a few times. Everything else, I'm just, eh. I read the books. Saw them. I saw the first two movies. I'm uh, a fan of like Divergent. No. Yeah, no. I Maze Runner. No, thank you. I watched, I read Maze Runners. Um... The Hunger Games, I loved the first. I loved the first two books. I loved the majority of the last book. I didn't like how it ended, so I didn't see the movie. Didn't want to like break your heart like that. I mean, I already knew what happened, but I just I hated how they ended it, so I didn't watch it. Fair enough. Fair enough. You like Game of Thrones, though. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of like. A, you have to be ready for some of it because some of it's like, whoa, yeah, like that. I wasn't expecting that to happen, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's good. It's quality. It's a lot of things I'm trying. I should. I need to watch. Sopranos, The Wire. Oh, that's, that's just HBO related. Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, I tried watching The Wire. My dad and I tried watching The Wire like years ago. Like one of, I think that's one, one, if not my dad. That was one of my dad's, if not his favorite show of all time. Really? I think so. See, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that. We watched the first season. They could barely get through the first season, man. It yeah. was a drag. Uh, can't do 65, Bob. Can do 75. 
or you can do 75. I've heard it, I've heard a lot of people say they love The Wire, but I just could not get through the first season, man. It's okay. Don't what was happen. the other one you said? Sopranos? Sopranos. Sopranos is good, too. The Wire. Split there is at 70. Can't do 70. Seventy-five is pretty much the lowest we can go. That's correct. Sorry, Bob. Split the difference. Seventy-two fifty. <laughs> we would still. Ready. For seventy-five. Sorry, Bob. I I hate to nickel and dime you like that, but. Um. There's a certain price we can't go under, unfortunately. That is uh, correct. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate you. Should be should be updated price wise. Did I save? Should have. Did you see the? Uh, they recently came out with. James Gandolfini, the guy who plays Tony Soprano, got paid $3 million to not be Michael Scott on The Office. Wow. Did you, see, you didn't see that? I didn't. I had no idea about yeah, that. Yes, so he was auditioned for Michael Scott. And HBO said, I'll give, we'll give you $3 million to not do it. Wow. Yeah, obviously he took it. That is... Um, uh, what, a, what a weird show that would have been if I know, right? James Gandolfini. He is an abs He had an abs absolute admiration for SpongeBob, though. Gandolfini. I've, I've heard about that. Really, I've not heard that. He was a big SpongeBob fan. Really? You can look it up, but I I believe he was a huge SpongeBob fan. I'm going to look it up. I wonder why. Like his kids, big fans, or what? Hey, Bob. Have a good one, Bob. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, you're right. They got all these pictures with him and SpongeBob. Yeah, right? Wow. Pretty wild. Pretty. That's awesome. Uh, we pulled the TB12 in the Mega Jersey, but it, uh, we pulled it in the Mega Jersey, but it's still available in the Diamond. I guess this is a lot of things that I want to watch. I want to watch uh, Peaky Blinders. I don't know that. Start, uh, it's about a um, gang in London. It's played uh, the main character. Uh, Thomas Shelby is played by the actor who played uh, Scarecrow in the okay, Batman yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that is like world renowned, not world renowned, but like a super, super. Uh, Highly recommended show. Hmm. Um, my parents and I started with, like the first couple of seasons, but never finished it. Nice. I think you should like start a series. I keep like double clutching, <laughs> saying, um, uh, "Not today." Nice. Uh, the, the last show that I was super interested in, other than like the Marvel shows, was The Boys on a Amazon. Oh, I've heard good things about that too. And I was grinding on it, grinding on it, and I have the last two seasons to watch. The last two seasons, the last two episodes to watch in the second season. I think my biggest problem is I hate watching something and then having to wait to see what happens next. So like I hate watching like. So you're a millennial. <laughs> yeah, I hate like having. Oh, okay, now I have to wait for season three. I get it. So I think at this point I have to rewatch the boys and then just keep watching through episode seven and eight in season two. Nice. Which is fine. It was a good show. It is a good show. Same with uh, same with Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Never watched season six, the final episode, but I like was super into that. Oh, yeah. Now season seven came out, and then season eight's coming out, so I'll probably just rewatch it. Season eight. I think the last show that I watched fully all the way through 
other than like Marvel shows, because that's I think it's like a little bit different. Probably The Office. Really? Yeah, I don't think I. I like watching TV, but it's not like I need to sit and have a show to watch every. Like my like Nat. She goes through so many shows. So like, yeah, I'm done with this sh- this show. Did you just have that? Yeah, but so like while she's like doing her homework or like cooking, she'll like have a show on. Hmm. And she just like finds like shows that are like not popular, super popular. Big kudos to her for yeah, definitely. having a taste, but like not having a taste in a way. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I think that's gonna do it for us this evening. Uh, appreciate everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at noon with Donnie and Dave, and then uh, the boys will be back for Tuesday night action here in the Ultimate Autographs Live Break Studio. Uh, until then, have a great rest of your Monday evening. And uh, make sure you join us tomorrow. Um, Until then, peace out.